Yeah. So welcome everyone. And um, I think today is the final day for the training and I don't see maybe some other meeting unless otherwise, but for now, I consider everyone the, in this last meeting and uh, those who submitted their work uh, to be able to have certificate because uh, the work was to be able to know if you can understand and you'll be telling us some experiences. And from my records, uh, yeah, I have, let's see, people who submitted. Yeah, work. Um, we have Daniel, um, we have Celestina, we have Ubina, we have Pecor Lawrence, uh, who submitted just now. And probably, as I rightly said, we, we consider those who submitted their work it to be able to have certificate because it's the work that kind of give us the most impression of if and if you really know what you're doing if you really know what you're doing and if we have project in future the reason why we do this is because if we have project in future uh, we consider to involve those with certificate because they know what we are doing and we could involve them, we could call them because we have their contacts, we have their email. This is why it's important to, to have the certificate. But for those that did not do the assignment, I don't know what happened, no explanations, then it's difficult. So we cannot really say we could give you certificate without assessing you or so, it's difficult. So let's start with Daniel. Uh, please, can you tell, maybe let's discuss about your issues, how, what, what did you face? What was the problem? And from there, like, how you work out the information? All right, sir. Good day, sir. Yeah, good day. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, my experience was quite interesting today. I, I went for the inspection this afternoon, although I didn't face any challenge basically because the citizens of the environment I inspected was is, is an environment I stay around so many people knows in no media so mm -hmm. there was no obstruction at all so I went to a river in an area called the, the close range to mm -hmm. my school yes mm -hmm. and the river I learned that people are not allowed to wash clothes there or to defecate there or do any sort of things. Although animals are allowed to come there, animals come around there. At least I saw goats around that place drinking mm -hmm, at the close mm -hmm. side of the river. All right. Mm -hmm. So I could note that. And also I looked for latrines around or any, some, uh, any um, form of farm around. I could not find any where as far distances. In fact, the river does not have houses around. Around it, so I could note all those things and mark it out. Also, um, I went to a a compound close to mine, and they have a hand dog well there. Mm -hmm. Although only seeing the water alone, only the water sample is is that is show that how dirty the water is because mm -hmm. the the well does not have coverage like it's open, mm -hmm. no cover. Mm -hmm. Then. It, the the it's cemented inside the the well inside deep down is cemented, mm -hmm. but there are cracks on the wall mm -hmm. and spirogyra on the surface and inside the well. Mm -hmm. So I noted it and close the well was not too far from different soccer way, not just one, mm -hmm. up to like different soccer way. My compound. The soccer way in my compound is not even up to, if I want to calculate it, that is, it should not be up to 10 meters like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the well. So it's like it has different, different um, um, factors that can make the water very, very, very affected. 
Yeah. So I could, yeah. I, it's, mm-hmm. it's like opened my mind to a new new phase of before I was thinking of just geophysics depth and if <laughs> you can drill up to um hundred meters, if I can drill up to fifty meters, the water will be clean, all those kind of understanding. But now I can know that even at a, a close range, I can see I can see and this high tendency of water getting infected. Uh-huh, yes, uh-huh. and even that well, self, eh, I use sometimes maybe if I don't have water, no light to pump water, we go there to fetch and bait and stuff like that. So, <laughs> like, I is an eye opener to me very, very much. Okay, that's great. Thank great you, sir. Yes, Thank I, you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, you, sir. I, I go to Madame Celestina. Uh, maybe you could give me your experience in, in your work. So tell us what you faced, what was your challenge? Mm. Okay, uh, sorry. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, when I say my Mine wasn't really stressful as well. I just visited my auntie in the Air Force base in Kano. Oh. So I just decided to just, yeah, this afternoon. So I just decided to just carry out the, um, the work around her. I stayed with her own house, actually, then her neighbor's house. Uh-huh. So I just made use of those two. So oh. uh-huh. their place actually like is, is a military, yeah, it's a military barracks. So what they do is they have a central, I don't know. Okay, they have like the state water board are the ones actually supplying the water. So mm-hmm. each house, yeah, each house have an underground tank. Okay, mm-hmm. so that underground tank will now supply to the tank that is up the roof, mm-hmm. okay? And then that tank then supplies the water into their own house. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> Sir? I understand, yeah, it's good, it's a good experience. <laughs> yeah, so that's how they, they get the water there. So the tap just runs within the house, it's not a general tap. And then the tank, everybody has, his or her own tank. They don't share the tank, both the underground tank and also the tank that is up the roof is an individual thing. So um, the question, the number one question, the tap is actually not outside, the tap is inside the, the house, the, the ones in the kitchen and the, the bedroom. And then um, the storage tanks and all the pipes are actually not leaking. There was no any record of um, leakage. And then the tank for the underground tank, since I could not actually go up the roof to see the tank, but the underground tank at least is, is free of um, spirogyra. There was, I did not actually see any. Although she, they just packed in and she told me that they bought the tank, I think three months ago. So maybe that's why. There's no any trace of spirogyra. Okay, or, okay, or... yeah. So, cut your shirt. Uh, did you experience like this? What was the material made of this underground tank? Is it the plastic or concrete? Yes, yes, it's plastic. Okay. It's plastic. Okay, so put the one up the roof too is also plastic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then the pipes, the pipes too are all plastic pipes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, fairly good system which they use. It's a, it's a good idea for protection. And it's a good innovation for that area, I think. So I think you don't have problem with your site. And uh, even if you have to talk about uh, safety tanks around that, uh, around that area, you'll be like, okay, you know, plastic is uh, also very uh, flexible to breakage. And this is one other common properties of plastic. Uh, especially polyvinylene uh, plastics, which are being used, so it's good for that purpose. 
Okay, so let's go to Mr. Fred. I think uh, Songoli. I don't know if he's here. Uh, I think he's gone. Network. Maybe Mr. Odner. I can get to know if he did something and we'll probably go to the next. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kole. Yeah. Uh, I was very observant about uh, the water sanitation conditions in my area, even though I did not uh, actually get a chance to print out the form and fill it due to work hours at work the whole day. But observing, we we have a stream just about uh, about 25 meters from the house. Yeah, 25 to 30 meters from the house. And that stream actually is a dump site. Actually a dump site for waste. So that almost already a very dangerous uh, threat to that water. And just at the house, we have about uh, 10 meters from my door. We have a well which was uh, dug just about five months ago. But the thing is the contamination now is actually from what I could observe is mainly I can say is Uh -huh. I think uh... to maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is see us network see us network yeah, so the concrete is also dissolving like in some few particles, like gradually, which I think it needs to get some time before I see how I can treat it. So that was my experience. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good one. Uh, Mr. Gabriel Dagel, I think we can get your own experience. Um, good, good evening, everyone. Oh, yeah, good evening. Uh, I think why I say it's not actually a word. So I mostly did household, like moving from one house to another. <laughs> and it was not easy. Like the people were not really receptive to the... I said, but one family caught my attention because due to the cholera outbreak in Cameroon, they actually gave me the opportunity to do the investigation of their water. Mm -hmm. for, so they actually the water, where they carry water is, it's like their tank, they clean it. Like when I saw them today, they clean the tank. It's like a safety, like a, how do you call it, this forage. Mm -hmm. they, they, in it today and from what she, tell, she was telling me she said they clean it like regularly every week because of the sanitary level and the cholera outbreak so they are scared but the environment was really clean their water containers were clean and most of the water containers were not even on the floor they had something like a, a mat that they put before putting their water containers there because of the, the cleaning, she actually, she just, one of them had cholera and they had to change their lifestyle and everything had to be clean. So from what I got, people are really not receptive to the water purification thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know.
Ah, oh, so I think uh, Gabriel's network is bad. Uh, okay, so I think all, all of us can uh, get me five on five. And uh, now we are going to share in, in the slide or rather the workshop. So basically, um, this, this is very crucial. It's very crucial because um, we want to talk about some community issues based on our water assessment and uh, our expertise and to be able to test our critical knowledge and, and analysis based on some approach which we are going to be looking at. And the case study, which we are going to look at is just one of the case studies, which is very important for you as uh, a member or rather a, a water, um, a water uh, agent. And to be able to look at the community in such maybe a water project being able to, uh, uh, maybe to be implemented in some communities. It's very important for you to understand the complex when it comes to community water projects. So this is why we are doing this case study, because when you get to the community, if we have a project or there's a project that's going on and you are, you are being employed as uh, a water uh, environmental engineer or maybe an officer, which is in front of uh, uh, advocating for clean water, then you must be able to know how to handle issues when it comes to community settings, uh, people managing the water, and key aspect of this uh, case study is about sustainability, water and sustainability. This is why it's very important. And some of you that are part of this workshop, it will be great for you to understand the real <laughs> challenges on the field in this workshop. So let's go, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Okay. Wow. Can you see my screen? I think maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's really simple. So this is workshop two. And uh, the aspect about this workshop two is about uh, talking on how we can be able to implement a successful project in a, in a community, a water project, and how do we manage and this water source and the infrastructure, and also to be able to regularly check and to build a sustainable uh, system for the community and how to form groups in the community to maintain this particular water source after the project has been implemented. So there are going to be some questions after this. So the first thing is this workshop based on local water committee, or we call them water users group. So what are water users group? Uh, what is a what? Maybe you can say what is a water users group, or what is a water committee? It's a now water committees are just a, a body or kind of like a group of persons who have been. Um, assigned either by the chief or by some other community members uh, that they should be able to um, partake in maintaining their water source, particularly most of the times for drinking, not for other purposes. So water committee are those people and they are made up of different kinds of uh, works of people, villagers like uh, farmers, you can have some people and you can have also women, you can have some other educated people in different walks of life being part of that community to make sure that there's an effective running of, of, um, of water supply system in that community. So you can see the, the, the definition is written there. So say water, uh, lo the local water committee is made up of community members who are choosing to oversee the operation and upkeep of the water supply system. So the purpose which we are going to be focusing on in this workshop. The first one is to introduce the idea of cost and benefit assessment. 
to participants in the context of local water sources, making sure participants consider the decisions and options that the villagers must make. The third purpose of this workshop is to assign, or sorry, is to assist them in understanding the necessity and significance of dividing the community into water committee groups. So, and we can go down. So case study, this is where we are. Case study, my 16 Bolifamba community, Cameroon. This is a case study in Cameroon, a particular community in Cameroon. So we are going to read through this and maybe as I'm speaking, uh, maybe reading, please follow the slides or follow the reading and also get what is going on. So we said my 16 is a small community in Boya, Cameroon, having a spring water catchment. Please be able to focus because there are questions we are going to be asking detailing. Uh, covering an area of about 50 um, meters square. The community spent two months building the catchment alone, but during the last month, later partner with a skilled water catchment development team uh, called Eco Water to complete the building and reinforcement of catchment protection. The total cost of this additional help was 3,000 US dollars, but the well was completed quickly and finished in 2021. So this is the picture of the catchment in my 16 photo taken by Ecolab that was last year. So we go to the next uh, paragraph. The catchment was built and uh, water was supplied to various stand posts that was easily accessible to the population. Previously, villagers had always used canal waters on protected rivers and streams. However, following discussions with staffs from a community-based NGO, Ecolab, they gave awareness and insisted that the community should invest in building a catchment for the community spring water, which was assessed and analyzed to be of low rates of contamination by environmental and water sanitary inspectors of the organization. The organization further noted that if measures is not taken fast, children and elderly, which are most vulnerable, will always be sick and mainly, and, and many will die young from, from diarrhea and uh, typhoid fever and cholera. The community water catchment was built by Eco Water and uh, with the partnership uh, with Eco, Eco Lab and support came from UNICEF without any re uh, discussions with villagers beforehand. The catchment pump water effectively for a few months, but then broke. The, lo uh, the local bu builder in the community tried to amend the backfield and mansory of the catchment, but it was unsuccessful. The, the local authorities in my 16 Bulifamba said that they had no materials to rehabilitate um, the catchment, but sent the builder to UNICEF. One week later, the eco water staff returned to fix the water catchment and initiated discussions with the community on the problems of maintaining the catchment. The villagers had, had never realized so many complex issues were involved but with the help of the builder, village leaders, community women, and pressure from the chief helped to form a local water community group to oversee the management of the water source and catchment. So these are the questions for discussions, which we are going to be partaking now. So the story is just about uh, a water project that was being carried out in my system in the, this community in Cameroon. And in every aspect, we could see that this project was being handled single-handedly by the community, which they have no experience. And they don't, they don't have a group 
like a water committee at that moment. This is just the summary I'm giving. And later on, they saw that they could not do it on their own. Now they sought for help from an, ex from an experienced group, which is EcoWater. This group is experienced in building catchment, do all those kind of stuff for water supply system in community setting. And after some time, we understood that there actually there was an organization that was a local based or community based organization, which is Eco Lab, that came and also was doing some awareness campaign and also did some analysis of inspections and informed the community about the dangers of not carrying out such projects before the project started. And so they took into the initiative to start that because there was lack of funding, they had to seek for help from other experienced um, uh, company or other um, organization. So this project was funded, as you can see, by UNICEF. That's the storyline. It was funded by UNICEF. It was a partnership between Ecolab and UNICEF. And then the project was awarded to Ecowater to, to implement this catchment building. And because of that, we saw that after Ecowater did whatever they did in the field to build, just a few months later, a few weeks later, we, uh, that catchment was broken. There was leakage. And now, because there was no community set up at that point, uh, the local people don't know. They have little experience to manage all these things and the rest. So a local builder came up to be able to partake into into supporting how to reinforce this catchment, but this builder could not succeed because he's in inexperience. And so the, the traditional leaders send this guy to uh, UNICEF to complain. And after UNICEF complained, UNICEF gave a report probably to Ecolab and Ecolab gave a report to Ecowater. And a few weeks after Ecowater came to reinforce it and now explain to the community how the difficulties is there. And because of that, the community learned information that uh, learned from the information which Ecowater give about the complex in handling and maintaining uh, such uh, water project or water structures in the community, how it is, and uh, they need to also be able to be uh, be together. So with that information, they decided to form a local water committee to manage this. And this question is for all of us now, which we are going to be discussing and I want us to reconnect now and come back for these questions. And after you're done with these questions, you're true and truly you, you, you are ready for some complex situations and you're ready for employment. So let's reconnect. Uh, okay.